This particular migration is really important because if you look at Pronghorn and Grand Teton National Park, they are one of the large megafauna that people from all over the world come to the Yellowstone system to be able to see. If we sever this migration corridor, then we will no longer have pronghorn in Grand Teton National Park. Pronghorn migrate in places like the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem because we have such severe winters in the region and the snow is so deep that they can't survive in the same places that they spend the summers during the winters. And so what we see in this part of the world are pronghorn that summer in and around Grand Teton National Park. They overwinter approximately 120 kilometers to the south in the Upper Green River Basin near the town of Pinedale, Wyoming. The migration corridor itself is uh, an unusual for pronghorn because it's, it's very narrow in spots, very tight. Uh, to uh, make this, they have to travel over a terrain that is untypical for pronghorn, steep conditions, sometimes even mountainous conditions. Uh, so naturally, they have some constrictions that they have to negotiate as, as they make the migration. And then humans have added a lot of obstacles to that. These can be subdivisions going in, uh, in some um, particularly tight spots that, that we see in, at the beginning of the Green River Valley. Uh, lots and lots of fences. Uh, although a uh, pronghorn can negotiate most fences, typical livestock fences, they're not good jumpers, so they try to go under the fences. Uh, so if it's a fence that's designed like a sheep fence with woven wire that goes all the way to the ground, that pretty much will block them from moving. And then the highway, US-191, cuts straight across the uh, path of the pronghorn, the migration corridor, at a very narrow constriction that uh, forces them to go across the highway at a very narrow spot. WCS started documenting this migration along with partners from Grand Teton National Park and Wyoming Cooperative uh, Unit at the University of Wyoming in the early 2000s. And we've been collecting data since about 2005 from GPS callers that identified what is now known as the Path of the Pronghorn, which is the first federally designated migration corridor in the United States. And the migration corridor crosses a busy uh, U.S. highway, Highway 191, um, on the migration route. And because our data, uh, working with the partners, identified this as a potential threat and barrier to this migration route, the Wyoming Department of Transportation identified this as a key barrier and something that they would be interested in working on to mitigate the impacts of that road. We had GPS callers on Pronghorn before construction began at Highway 191 for the crossing structure. So we have some, some pre-data, but um, important to us was to collect some behavioral data on these animals. Um, the same pronghorn that are wearing radio collars as well as the ones that aren't, that are in the same population, so that we can see the animal's reaction to the construction process. What happens when we try to mitigate um, for the highway being a problem? What happens to the animals? How do they react as we're constructing and trying to mitigate? And then what happens when the construction is all done? How are the animals, what sort of ease are they, or dis-ease are they having as they try to move through um, their traditional migration route um, when we've put in these crossing structures? We were just driving up this road to check out a small group down here that we're thinking about hanging out for the late evening to see if it crosses. Um, so we did a, a drive-by to see if we could see where they were at and we came up to this ridge and there's a large group that's actually running. They're a long ways away, but they're running towards the crossing of the highway and um, we were not expecting that group to actually move tonight. So we may have crossings tonight in a nice sunset. So, oh, there's the group.
One of the things that we've learned through this uh, project is that we can be successful with these road mitigation structures. Um, we're seeing pronghorn use them and mule deer, both the overpass and the underpass structures. And so we've learned that the design of these structures was correct to have use by these species. And so we can take those uh, bits of information and data points and translate them to other systems. One of the things that I hope that we see through all of our conservation efforts um, and with the partners and the people that have a vested interest in pronghorn and the greater Yellowstone ecosystem is that these Serengeti-like concentrations of overwintering ungulates in the upper green are maintained into the future so that future generations can go out there into the upper green and see 40 or 50,000 pronghorn. And through the efforts that we've done, not only with our partners in Grand Teton National Park, but also at the state uh, level in Wyoming, that we've protected summer range, the winter range, and the migratory pathway. In order to have uh, ecological phenomena like migration remain on the landscape, we have to be concerned with all three of those components. If we do a really good job of protecting the migration corridor and we build like these overpass structures and underpass structures, yet we lose winter range because of natural gas development, then all of our efforts have gone for naught. And so we have to be concerned with all three components to maintain migration.